So do you ever get super frustrated because you're not getting the results that you want with clients? Or maybe your clients are frustrated at you because they're not getting the results that they want, right? I've been in that situation. It's extremely frustrating. In this video, we're gonna talk exactly how to do that. Stay tuned. So in this part of the certification, we're gonna be talking about what are the laws of transformation, okay? And uh, what I've noticed over the years is the people that are following these laws are gonna get results, okay? And uh, as soon as I started to learn about these things and, and apply these things within my business, everything started to change, okay? And so whenever we're putting together programs, events, uh, online trainings, anything that we can at all, we want to make sure that we're looking at these laws and making sure that they're fit what we're actually teaching. So um, the first law is sacrifice. Okay, there has to be some type of sacrifice. Okay. And so uh, the story I like to tell into regards of sacrifice is uh, so that so the Aztecs um, had this belief that they had to sacrifice blood in order for the sun to shine the next day. Okay, that's what they believed. And so according to, uh, according to the historians, right, uh, they took people who were prisoner of war, they captured animals, and even people who broke laws, and they would essentially cut, cut them up in front of people, right, and spill their blood so all the gods could see Right, and so they believe that unless they did that, sun wasn't going to shine the next day. Right, kind of crazy, isn't it? And so, um, every religion has this. There's some type of sacrifice, and there was this um, conquistador named uh, Colonel Cortez. Okay, and a conquistador is essentially they went and they conquered villages, they conquered places, and they took all the treasure. Back then, that was actually really normal. You could be a blacksmith. Or you could be a conquistador. It was just something that was a uh, calm back then. Anyways, this, um, they were going to overtake the Aztecs. And no one had ever take, overtaken the Aztecs. And so Cortez knew that if they were going to able to take this, uh, the civilization down, right, and conquer them, that they couldn't play small. And so when he got to the beach, so he ordered his other leaders, okay, to burn the boats. And if someone said no, ah, stabbed them, okay, killed them right there and said, next person up, burn the boats, okay? And the reason why he burned the boats is because if people have a choice between living or dying, they're going to live, okay? He knew the power of sacrifice, right? And so they end up conquering uh, the Aztecs, Okay, uh, Tony Robbins, you might have heard the story before, burning of the boats. Okay, we got to burn our boats. We got to stop leaving exit points. Okay, so a sacrifice, okay, requires giving something up and giving something new. Okay, and that's why, you know, maybe you've heard this before, that's why people don't get results from their programs if they're not investing, right? There is no sacrifice, okay? So the next one is what's their state, okay? What's the emotional state that they're in? Um, what did you remember in seventh grade math class? What did you remember in eighth grade uh, history class? What did you remember in uh, ninth grade science, right? We have a hard time remembering these things that we've been through because we have a low state, okay? So state is something that's super important if you want people to internalize things, okay? So we got to have a good state, okay? If you go to Tony Robbins' Unleash the Power from Within, for four days, you're, you're jumping up and down. You're getting your body into it. You're going, going. And so the reason why it has you do that is because emotion creates motion, okay? If we have a different emotional state, okay, that's going to help us do something different. Vice versa, if we have more motion, we create more emotion, which draws back into the motion, right? And so you got to understand that if you want people to internalize what you're talking about, you have to get their state to change, okay? And this comes through being more emotional and having more emotion, okay? The third one is truth, okay? How deep are you going? How truthful are you going? And so kind of the analogy I talk about is people spend time 
cutting off branches, right? Dealing with these very surface level things that are the problem. Once we go down to the deeper part of the root, when we dive deeper down to the truth, okay, we can really fix the problems. And so I really noticed this as a personal trainer. Okay, a person come to me and say, I'm struggling with eating. Okay, I'm struggling with, uh, with going to the gym. Okay, and the average person would say, well, go to the gym. The average person would say, eat better, right? Here's, here's a meal plan. However, what's the truth of the situation? Okay, what's the deepest core belief that's causing the person to eat bad or causing the person to not go to the gym? Okay, so you have to understand that there's levels to our beliefs, right? And so with a lot of coaches, we spend time up here dealing with surface level answers. And when we're dealing with self surface level answers, okay, then we're not planting the seeds that we need to actually grow the results that the clients want to grow. Okay, so you got to understand that the truth usually lies down into deeper beliefs of what the person has in their unconscious. Okay. And the more you go down there and help them realize that, the more transformation you'll be able to create with your clients. Next one, awareness. Okay. So this kind of builds off truth. Okay. How aware is your actual clients? Okay. So they say 95% of our actions are at the subconscious level. Okay. 95%. Holy shit, talk about the zombie apocalypse, right? We're already in the zombie apocalypse. We're just a bunch of unconscious beings walking around, right? Praying to the cell phone gods. Okay, we're very, we're very unaware. So the conscious is, means aware, unconscious or subconscious means unaware. Okay, and one of the things that you have to realize is that your clients are usually unaware of a lot of their habits that hold them back from achieving their results. So one of the things when you're working with people, you got to help them be more conscious. Okay, and to help them be more conscious comes through your workbook, okay, your, your trainings, right, your, uh, your assignments, okay, that you give them. And the more you can get them to look at these habits and the more you can get them to look at these behaviors, Okay, the better results you're going to get because the clients that get the best result, they just have the best performance habits. Okay, it's not that they necessarily know the most, they just have the best habits that are getting them to the result, right? And so going back to the example of the personal trainer, okay, if they can get their person in a habit of going to the gym every single day, then most likely they're going to get results. Okay, all right. And if they're not getting into the habits, then it's like, what do they need to be aware of that's holding them back from not getting into those habits? What's the belief? What's the, what's the identity that they're holding on to? So awareness, okay, and understanding their own behaviors. So the fifth one is a decision, a choice, okay? Life comes down to a choice. Are you going to choose to go all in on your business? Okay, are you going to choose to go to the gym at every single day? Are you going to choose into having a better mindset? Okay. Are you making a conscious choice? Okay. Life comes down to choices, right? What's the choice? Okay. And so, uh, an example of this, I had uh, a client years ago and before they even started, before we, before we even began, they decided in their mind that this wasn't going to work. So they had already made a choice that what we were going to do wasn't going to work because they already done something in their mind similar to it and it wasn't going to work. And so you got to realize what are the choices and commitment levels that people are coming into the program? Because if there's any doubt, right, if there's any hesitation in what, in what they're doing, then they're just not going to get the result regardless of how good you are as a coach, regardless of how good the map is and everything like that. So you got to make sure that you're understanding, okay, what choice they're making, okay, on a scale of one out of 10, how committed are you to doing this, okay? We don't work with anything less than a 10, okay? Nine says, I'm going to let one thing hold me back. And eight says, two things are going to hold me back, okay? 10 says, I'm all in on making this choice. Okay, and the reason why a lot of people don't get the results that they want, they're just, they're not convinced, they're not committed. They haven't made that choice that I'm gonna follow through regardless of what happens. It's, it's just so crucial that your clients are making powerful commitments and powerful choices to the process and making sure that you're aware of that. 
where where is their psyche at when when they're beginning something and the more that they're bought into it the more it works and this is the thing that i see out in the world of marketing right everyone's like this strategy is the best this strategy is the best you know and someone else will do this strategy and they say that strategy sucks well that strategy worked for someone else why didn't it work for you and the reason why is because our belief coming into it is everything so if there's, again, if there's any hesitation of belief that whether this isn't or is going to work, then they're not going to get the results, okay? So making a decision is very important. The next one, number six, behavior, okay? We talked a little bit about this, Lugo. What's the behavior or the patterns of your clients, okay? And so this is something that you need to work with in your training, okay? What's the pattern that they're following each and every day? Are they conscious in their pattern? Okay, so behaviors, okay, what's the steps that they do? What time are they waking up? What time are they going to bed? Okay, what do they do uh, at lunchtime, right? What do they do when they go to bed? And so, um, you know, as you get working with people, you're going to start to see some really powerful patterns that holds people back from achieving what they do. And so getting, again, this kind of goes back to truth and awareness, getting them to look into a higher truth and a greater awareness can help them understand what are the patterns that are holding them back from getting to the results that they want. The last one and probably one of the most important ones is accountability, okay? Accountability. What's the, what's the follow-up? Okay, how are they being accountable? Okay, and this is probably one of the biggest things that your clients are gonna ask for. And I was sitting down with a client the other day and I was asking them, hey, what are some things that you need from us? And they said, I need you to hold me accountable. And I go, great, there's lots of accountability. There's gonna be lots of follow-ups. Okay, you're not just following up with me, you're gonna follow up with other people in the team to make sure we're moving forward in this branding process, right? But then I said, what if, what if we say, hey, this needs done by a certain amount of time, okay, and you don't do it, okay? He says, well, follow up with me and, and, and get on me. I was like, okay, so let's say I follow up with you and get, get on you about it, in, in their words, and you still don't do it. What do you, how do you want me to hold you accountable at that point in time? And they kind of sat back in their chair and they're like, yeah, you're right. I go, so at the end of the day, you know, who has to be, who has to be the most accountable? He said himself. Okay. So you do need to provide a level of accountability for your clients, but if they enter the program, believing that it's your job to get them results and it's your job alone to hold them accountable. Okay. Then you've already screwed them up. Okay, you've already you've already you've already messed up the the result of what you're wanting to do. Okay, so make sure you have parts of your program that are accountable. Also, just as important as that is, make sure you have them understand that they're accountable to their results. Okay, no one follows me around my business and makes sure as I'm doing what I'm doing. Okay, no one's gonna hold you to a higher level of accountability than you hold yourself. Okay, and the same is true with your clients. So you need to have accountability on your own, but at the same time, you need to make sure that they understand that you need to be accountable to account, to be accountable to it, okay? So these are the laws of creating transformation, okay? So when you're, again, events, programs, branding, marketing, all these different things, okay? These are, these are the laws that are gonna help with your clients getting better results. And the more you can work these into your programs and what you're doing and, and be aware of them and conscious of them, okay, the greater results that you are going to create within your program, okay? Make sure you're going back through these videos if you need to. Make sure you're filling out the workbook. Check out the podcast as well, Next Gen Coaching Chronicles, okay? All right, well, I dive more in depth uh, I dive more in depth in some of these things and then talk about how to scale your business, branding, marketing. I have some awesome people come on the podcast, so make sure you guys check that out, okay? And good talk. We'll talk soon.